Now, when you go to buy a house, more than likely you're gonna get a mortgage. And with that mortgage, there's two different types that are really, really great types of mortgages to get. Number one is an FHA loan. And the number two is a conventional loan. Now, the differences between the two, I'm gonna to talk to you all about that, how and which one you should actually use to buy your property, depending on your situation, where you are. So you have an FHA loan, which is a Federal Housing Administration loan, FHA, Federal Housing Administration loan, and you have a conventional loan, which is a normal loan. The FHA loan is backed by the government, and the conventional loan is not backed by the government. And each one of these have different criteria, different benefits, as well as negatives, which we'll go into in just a second. Hey guys, my name is Dustin Heiner with Master Passive Income. I'm here to show you how to quit your J-O-B, that just overbroke job, by investing in real estate rental properties so you never, ever have to work a job again. And also, in a little bit, I'm gonna share with you how you can use an FHA loan to buy an investment property, to buy a rental property that makes you money in passive income, so stay tuned for that. Now, when we're looking at the differences between an FHA loan and a conventional loan and which one you should use, you really need to think about a couple things. Number one, your goals. And number two, what is your current financial situation? Because with both of those, that's gonna determine what you're gonna need, either an FHA loan or a conventional loan. Now, before I get into the goals and the situations, let's jump into what each one are. FHA loan is a Federal Housing Administration loan. There's a couple great things about having an FHA loan. Number one, you only have to put 3.5% down as a down payment. 3.5% of the purchase price is the down payment that you would put down on a house. Now, what that really looks like is if you buy a house for $200,000, you would have to put down only $7,000. Remember, 3.5% of $200,000 is only $7,000. Usually, with a conventional loan, which we'll get into in just a second, it's 20%. That would be $40,000, $40,000, which many of us don't have $40,000, but you can work your way really hard to save up $7,000 to buy your property with an FHA loan. Now, another great thing is you would have less than good credit. So with an FHA loan, you don't have to have a 600, 700, 800 credit score. You actually can have as low as a 580 credit score in order to buy your loan. So you have a low down payment, which is great for us normal people that don't have a lot of money, as well as a lower credit score of 580. That's the lowest criteria, which is fantastic because you can work your way really hard to get to $7,000. You can also work your way really hard to get to 580 in credit score. Now, those are the best reasons why you should use an FHA loan. Like I said, situationally, if you don't have that much money, you only wanna put down a little bit of money because you don't have much, then an FHA is a great way to go. Plus, if your credit score is low, then an FHA is another great way to go. Now, there are some drawbacks to utilizing an FHA loan. Number one is the private mortgage insurance. It'd be termed PMI, but private mortgage insurance. Now, the PMI is basically insurance. Insurance that you're paying the federal government and the government is insuring that property and all the money lent out that you would actually pay back the loan because the lender is saying, well, hey, government, you know, this person doesn't have a great credit score and they don't have a lot of money to put down. You know, they might walk away from the property really easily. Well, government comes in and says, hey, you know what? I'll take care of that. We will back the loan. They'll pay insurance. They'll pay extra money every single month and we will back the loan. So if they default or they go out of the loan, they don't continue paying it, we will back it. So that's what PMI is. It's a private mortgage insurance. And what that's gonna look like is every single month, you're gonna get a little bit extra taken out or paid towards the mortgage. So instead of paying a normal mortgage, which is your principal and interest, and you're also gonna be paying the PMI, which can look as much as like 100 to $200 extra every single month just to pay for the insurance. Another downside to this PMI is that PMI is permanent. Like you will not get out as long as it's an FHA loan, even if you have 20%, the way the laws are currently written right now, that PMI will literally stay on there. Even if you get down where you're almost done, like after 20 years, you're about ready to pay it off, you will still have the PMI. At least that's the way the laws are currently written. Now, I'm gonna give you a quick pro tip. A way to get out of this PMI is if you buy a house with an FHA loan, then you refinance with a conventional loan and you have 20% equity, then you get rid of that PMI. Huge pro tip I'll give you. So that'll save at least 100 to $200 every single month. That is a negative about having an FHA loan. Another negative is the interest rates for every single property. So an interest rate would be a little higher than a normal conventional loan, maybe one or two points higher than a regular conventional loan. And with that, the total paid in interest is gonna be much higher than it was with a conventional loan, as well as you're borrowing more. Because if you're putting a more of a down 
payment down, then you're gonna have less that you're borrowing. If you have less of a down payment down, you're borrowing more money. Just think about this. If you're buying a $200,000 house, if you put $40,000 down, that's $160,000 that you're borrowing. But if you're putting $7,000 down, that's $193,000 that you're borrowing. So you're borrowing even more money. So you gotta take all these things into account. Now let's talk about the conventional loan. Conventional loans are fantastic. They're really, really good. But if you don't have the money, an FHA loan might be a great way to go. Now what I would suggest is, if you are working towards a conventional loan and you have 20% down, that would be great. Now there's also are ways that you can actually do less like maybe 15 or 10% down payment, but that PMI would actually come in. And there's also other ways that you're gonna maybe get a second mortgage, which I would not strongly suggest. I would actually talk to a mortgage broker, talk to your accountant, make sure everything works out fine. In fact, back in the, before the crash in 2007 and 2008, they were doing that all over the place. It was basically getting a 100% loan, where you're getting 80% loan and 20% loan. You're not having any money coming out of your pocket. Well, the government worked really hard to stop that, so you still have to put it down in down payment. Now that's a conventional loan, is a 20% loan. The great things about this is you're also having a lower interest rate. Your interest rates are lower because you have, you're less of a risk. The reason why they have higher interest rates is because they want more money back when you have an FHA loan. They want it back faster to make sure you pay it off faster. You know, less of a risk to actually lose their money. With a conventional loan, you're putting a lot of money down. So you have skin in the game. You're like, man, I put $40,000 down. I'm not gonna just walk away from this house. I have $40,000 into it. Rather than if you only have like $7,000 into it, you're like, oh, I might be able to walk away from this property, which I would highly recommend you not do that. Now, which is actually cheaper between an FHA loan and a conventional loan? Like which one costs more? Because whenever you get a mortgage, you're gonna have to pay for that mortgage to actually be underwritten for the mortgage broker, for the bank. There's a lot of fees and title fees, like the title company's gonna have to get involved. There's so many other fees. I am currently right now refinancing one of my rental properties. It's in Houston. I'm getting a really, really good interest rate. It's like a 3% interest rate, 20 year note. It's fantastic. I'm only paying, because I'm refinancing it. I think I'm only paying like $25 more and I'm knocking off like five years off of the loan. So it's really great, but it's costing me $5,000 to do the refinance. And the only reason why it's working out well for me is because I'm dropping a whole interest rate, one interest rate point down from a, like 4.25 to down to a 3.15. So it's a really, really good deal. Now you can do this too. Now, every single mortgage that you're gonna get is gonna cost us money. Now an FHA loan and conventional loan are gonna be very, very similar, but in the end, what it's gonna look like is you're gonna be paying more in total interest. The difference between an FHA loan being let's say a 4.5% or a conventional loan being a 3.5%. It could vary, every single bank is different. And with that, you're gonna be paying more in interest, in total interest, because you have a higher interest rate, a four and a half percent as opposed to a three and a half percent. Now that is a, something gotta be considerate of. And if you're looking at a conventional loan versus an FHA loan, if you have more money to put down, maybe a conventional loan might be the great way to go. Now with a conventional loan, you're gonna have to put down 20% down. That 20% down payment or 15 or 10% down payment, you're gonna have to put a more of a down payment down, but you're gonna get better interest rates. Now, what's great about a conventional loan is you can buy a personal residence. You could also buy an investment property, which is fantastic. Now, like I told you just a little bit ago, I wanna show you how you can use an FHA loan to buy an investment property, to buy a rental property that's actually gonna be making you money in passive income. See, now, I teach my students how to buy rental properties that make them $250 or more in passive income, I'm gonna give you some one-on-one -on -one coaching, like literally coaching of how I coach these guys, how to do it as well. And also, if you wanna get started, I wanna show you how to invest in real estate. Check in the description below. I wanna give you my free real estate investing course. If you go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course, I will literally give you my free real estate investing course showing you how to buy properties, how to find the properties, how to invest out of state, how to make sure it's an automatic business, how to get money to buy the properties. I'll show you all that, masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course. So go there and check that out. Now this is what you've been waiting for, showing you how to buy an investment property with an FHA loan. You can absolutely do this. I love doing this. In fact, this is a great way, basically to house hack, basically to get into investing in real estate with little to no money. Now, another downside about an FHA loan is you literally have to live in that house for a year. Now, if it's a personal residence, great, you're gonna be living there, no big deal. But if you're investing in real estate, you're not gonna be living there. In fact, your tenants will be living there, so you can't buy a house with an FHA loan. But there is a trick or a hack. I'm gonna give you the pro tip, I'm gonna give you some one-on-one -on -one coaching on how to actually do this. Now, let's say you're gonna buy a house 
for $100,000, which our students, my students, what we do is we invest out of state. And there are houses that actually sell for $100,000 or even less. There are houses in the Midwest, down in the Southeast, that are actually selling for like fifty dollars and $60,000, some as low as like $20,000. Those are a little rougher, but there are houses like that. Now, when you go buy a house with an FHA loan to be an investment property, you have to live in there a year. But this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna find a house. Let's say it's a $100,000 house. You buy it and you move into it. You are only paying $3,500 as a down payment to move into this property. You move into it, you live in it for a year, maybe even six months. What you do is then refinance that property, pull it out of an FHA loan because the government is only gonna say you can have one FHA loan. You can't have eight, you can't even have two. You can only have one FHA loan on your credit. So what you do is you buy the first one with an FHA loan. Three and a half percent down, three, let's say if it's a $100,000 house, $3,500 down, you buy this house. You live in it for six months or a year. You paint it, you make it look good, you make it look like it's gonna be a great rental, and then you refinance it or you wait a year. If you wait a year, then you can move out if you want to, but this is the trick I'm gonna give you. Here's a big pro tip. You're gonna be able to do this again. It's awesome. So what you do is you refinance, the property, get it out of the FHA loan into a conventional loan. Hopefully if you did it right, if you bought the house right, if you captured equity, let's say they're asking $100,000, but you pay 80, so you $80,000, that's $20,000. Basically pocketing, you're capturing that equity, that is 20% in equity that you're literally pocketing. So in six months, you can refinance that house, put it into a conventional loan. Then this is what you do. Since you have this first house in a conventional loan, you then go and buy a second house. Buy a second house, put that in an FHA loan, put three and a half percent down, then move into that house and rent out your first house. Then you have two houses. Number one, you're living in one. Number two, you're renting out the first one, which is fantastic. Then you do it again. You refinance this second property that's in FHA loan into a conventional loan, and then you buy a third one that's an FHA loan. So you're continually getting this 3.5% down. Now what's great is you're gonna be paying the PMI a, a little bit front, but with a conventional loan, hopefully if you have 20% down, you're gonna get out of that PMI. So that even brings your payments down even lower. You can do this over and over again. I love to call it house hacking. Like you're hacking into the house. And even if you buy a duplex, even better, you buy your first house, a duplex. You don't even need to move out of that one. You can buy a duplex with an FHA loan, rent out the second unit. And then if you wanted to refinance that, put in a conventional loan, buy another duplex, move into that one for a year. Then you have two units, the original duplex that you own. Then you have another duplex and so you have three units with two properties, then you do it all over again. Man, investing in real estate is so fantastic. I wanna give you so much great investing content. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell because every week I'm putting out three episodes. You guys are awesome. Watch this video right here. I'll see you guys in the next one.